<laughs> and I'm Peter. I don't know if that was like picked up. <laughs> you what? It's like a blew into the microphone. Huh. Does it? What does it say? Ask me the question. I'll see if I can get it. Okay, ask me all six. We'll see how many I get. There we go. Okay, so six questions. Um, let's see. Number one, which state grew to become the second most populous in the United States by 1994? California. Nope. Second most populous. New York? Nope. Um, second most populous. I'm saying second most. I gave you two states. <laughs> um, New Jersey. Texas. Wait, is it by oh, people or by like density? most populous? <laughs> <laughs> which, is not, which is the most? Which is the most populated? Which is the second most populous by density? It's most populous state, which means oh, you said populous. I thought you said populated. It's okay. Way different. Which composer was honored on the bicentennial of his death with a 180 disc compilation on all of his works? Beethoven. What? Beethoven. No. Um, Mozart. It was a 180 disc compilation. Beethoven had nine symphonies. Yeah, they're really long. Not what 180 <laughs> discs. Uh, Tchaikovsky. No. Okay, who was it? The bicentennial of his death should have given you a hint. 200 years after he died. I know what that means. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Who? Mozart. I said Mozart. No, you didn't. You said Beethoven, and you said Tark- Tchaikovsky. The, and then in between those two, I said Mozart. Oh, you did? Whoops. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and you, you even said you were like, you didn't even, he only had nine symphonies. Like, you just, <laughs> no, that, told me. I, I shouldn't have told you that I was still talking about Beethoven. That's why I was confused. <laughs> um. Okay. So the next one, do you want me to give you the category before I give you the next one? Yeah, maybe that'll help. <laughs> History. Okay. Which organization elects the 15 judges on the world court? This is an easy one. The, the EU? This is from Trivial Pursuit Genius 4. The first question said, which is the most popular by 1994? The EU didn't exist yet. I don't know. I don't even know what the world court is. We don't follow it. The United Nations. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. This is science and nature. Which celestial okay. objects were once referred to as hairy stars? This is another reason. Hairy stars? Yeah. Comets? Yep. Okay. Got it. Okay. This next one I can guarantee. I didn't even read the question yet. I just read the answer. I don't think you're going to get it right. We'll see. You have to what give me $1,000 if I get it right. What sport is played with a driver disc, an approach disc, and a putting disc? Oh, never mind. That's Frisbee golf. Lot. Yeah, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I, just, I just thought you answered disc golf. I'm like, who's going to know the answer? <laughs> like, what's the name of the, like, this is the cup that is performed for what sport every year? The way I thought it would be. Nope. Just, what, which one has disc yeah. in it? Um, What name did General Motors come up with by combining the words Corvette and Bel Air? Corvair. Yeah. Okay. Boom. So three you are three, three, yeah, three for, no, three for six. <laughs> three for three means you got 50, all 50. three. Yes. That's all we can ask for in life. Well, we match Landis now all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Dude, match Landis shots. <laughs> yeah, so, Matt Landis is easily one of the worst human beings in the history of humanity. I wouldn't say that. He's just super annoying. Like, uh, he just needs to be put down a few pegs. <laughs> he needs to be put down, period. Um, he definitely did um, when Jesse Eisenberg said he based off Lex Luthor off of Max Landis. Yeah. And then, and then everyone, uh, I remember when Kevin Smith found that out, he's just like, oh, the Max Landis sense. needs to calm down. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Um, 
So let's see. So the we have our, our major news stories this week. Uh, a good amount of it is going to be coming out of the biggest story that dropped today. We have a new trailer for a movie coming out next week. Do you know what movie that is? Next to what? Next year. It comes out next year, this movie. We have a trailer for it that came out today. Avengers Infinity War. Yes. I just went on IMDb and it's on the front. Yeah. So, uh, biggest thing, potential spoiler that came out of this trailer. Uh, the trailer shows concept art of Thor fighting alongside Rocket Raccoon. Um, now, the Thor in this scene is not wielding his hammer. He's wielding something else, which upon closer inspection appears to be the axe that he uses in the Ultimate Universe. Huh. So does something happen where he's no longer um, he's no longer worthy in Thor Ragnarok? Or what happens there? We don't know yet. Um, but yeah, so that is, that's one of the big stories that came out today. Are there six Infinity Stones? Six, yeah. Okay, so this one will also reveal the time one, I guess? No, we have the time one already. Oh yeah, duh. Wait, which one don't we have? Soul Stone. What does it even do? Is that like I don't um, know how different it is at this point. From this. I think the number one problem is they mis they misuse the Mind Stone, so they don't uh -huh. know how they're going to. Uh, they don't know. I don't know how they're going to introduce the Soul Stone because the Soul Stone was originally in the forehead of Adam Warlock, which they're not going to do that again because then it's just a vision. Again. What if it's hidden inside of someone's ass and then they have to watch <laughs> someone shit out? Oh, uh, watch the anal prolapse of the Infinity Stone coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, no, that's, I can I can guarantee that's not gonna happen. Um, they take we, a dark turn. <laughs> they, had get edgy, they had to get edgy. We also found out who um, Dick Van Dyke will be playing in uh, what's it called? Um, Mary Poppins. Too. Mary Poppins too. Um, he's coming, which is coming out on Christmas, twenty eighteen. I don't think that's that gonna actually happen. What? What? That Dick Van Dyke will survive till Christmas 2018? No. What I think is they're going to... Um, I think that the movie's going to end up moving release dates. Because I don't see them opening against Star Wars. Um, I think they the could Han beat them. Solo, the Han Solo origin. Because Disney's not going to cannibalize itself. I really am looking forward to that. So here's, um, here's the synopsis of the movie. Mary Poppins Returns is set in 1930s Depression-era London. London, the time period... <laughs> of the original novels, and is drawn from the wealth and material in P.L. Travers' additional seven book. In the story, Michael, Ben Winshaw, and Jane, Emily Mortimer, are now grown up with Michael, his three children, and their housekeeper, Ellen, who's played by Julie Walters, living on Cherry Street Lane. After Michael su suffers a personal loss, the... Uh, oh my god, I lost my track of where I was. The nanny, Mary Poppins, Emily, who's played by Emily Blunt, ran into the lives of the Banks family, and along with optimistic lamplighter Jack, played by Lin-Manuel Miranda, uses her unique magical skills to help the family rediscover the joy and wonder missing in their lives. Mary Poppins also introduces the children to a new assortment of colorful and whimsical characters, including her cousin Topsy, played by Mar Meryl Streep. Hmm. So, also, Colin Firth will be playing William Weatherhall Wank Wilkins, the man who runs the bank, and Dick Van Dyke will be playing, uh, will be playing the son of a character he played in the original uh, Mary Poppins. That's weird. He'll be playing the son of the chairman of the bank. Oh, okay. You didn't know that he was the chairman of the bank in the original one, did you? No, because I thought he was a chimney sweep in the original one. <laughs> no, he also did the other one in heavy makeup. He was in heavy makeup. He did two hours of makeup to get into it uh, to play the older. Oh, okay, now I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah I didn't know that. Um... The kids are played by um, three relative newcomers um, to the world of acting. Uh, Pixie Davies, who's got her porn That's star name picked out for her. Uh, Nathaniel Sala, and newcomer Joel Dawson. Um, and let me look up this kid real quick. Uh, that's something you don't hear every day. Um, Nathaniel Sala. Played Arthur in Game of Thrones. Hmm. I don't know who that is. 
That's how uh, I kind of figured that out, too. Oh, he's a little kid. Okay. He's also a little kid. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's a little asshole kid. No, never mind. Um, so that's what's happening there. Then, uh, Shailene Woodley, this is not unrelated to Mary Poppins news, she said she will not be appearing in Ascendant, the fourth Divergent movie. Why, why are they still... Didn't the third one just go to TV? No, the fourth one is going to TV. The third one did awful. So they're like, you know what? Fuck it, let's put it on TV. And Shelly Ann Woodley's like, I'm not doing that now. Yeah, I would not. I'm... That's fine. <laughs> um, let's see. The, I'm just gonna, Perry White will not be in the Justice League. Um, let's see. Um, after John Wick Chapter 2... Uh, five movie franchises Ruby Rose should star in. Let's 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 uh, open this Pandora's box. Also, Rosario Dawson said she wanted to play a character in Star Wars. Um, cool. Do you know who it is? I'm sure a lot of people would. Do you know who who the character she wants to play is? Who? She wants to play um, Ahsoka in a live action movie. Cool. That I Good don't I I don't want Ahsoka anywhere near the live action movies. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, okay, so here are the five movies that Ruby Rose should star in, according to comicbook.com. Uh, Magic Mike. Okay. There we go. Underworld. N- no. Okay. I don't think that franchise should continue at all. Mission Impossible. Yeah, okay. That's, so far, that's the best one. Fast and Furious, again, okay. Yeah, great. Um... Gotham City Sirens. I don't know what that is. That is the upcoming um, oh, Suicide, that's Squad Suicide Squad, Squad but girls, right? with Harley Quinn, Catwoman, and Poison, and Poison Ivy. Ivy. Um, she, they say, they don't want her to play any of the leads, they just want her to play someone in the movie. And there is no, oh, that is the five, okay. That's it. I'm not very good at these top five. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> you can't count. <laughs> We know who is going to be directing uh, the Batman movie now. Uh, Max Landis. No. <laughs> I think that'd be... Oh. A, no. Um, let me see if I can find his filmography and see if you can figure out who it is. If he has any filmography of, date, of note. Um, George Lucas. He is writer of the TV... He's creator of the TV series Felicity. And no, no, no. I mean, the TV series Felicity, not Arrow. Felicity, the TV show. Um, he is the writer of War of the Planet of the Apes, uh, also director of War of the Planet of the Apes, um, directed Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Cloverfield, um, I don't know. His name is Matt Reeve. That's not, I, that name sounds familiar. That, that seems fine. I like Dawn but, and... And Cloverfield wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, so he'll be doing that, um... Inhumans has started production. Um, so get ready cool. for that. I mean, who was excited for that? Um, apparently, Brie Larson's age is an Evil issue. People in the movie Inhumans. Uh, um, apparently, Brie Larson's age is an issue for Captain Marvel. I don't think anyone has a problem with that. Oh, wait. Do you know how old um, Natalie Dormer is? 40? Yeah, close. 35. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I thought she was younger. Than that. I didn't. She she was old. She was old enough to be in um what's it called the Tudors already with Henry Cavill. A lot of people from Game of Thrones from the Tudors with Henry Cavill. Um, let's see what oh. else we have. Um, oh, we have a synopsis for an upcoming movie. Get pumped! Oh, um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two scored a perfect score with test screeners. I don't, it scored uh, a perfect hundred we'll out of hundred. I don't really follow those. Well, previously, the top two movies ever in test screening were Iron Man, uh, no Iron Man three, and the Avengers, both of which scoring in the in high nineties. Like for Marvel, no, all time or in the history of movies. History of movies with test screening. Not all movies do test screenings, though, right? Right. Now, okay, uh, let me... Let and me movies re- like this would... 
I guess. Now let, let me read you this over here. So you know how they give you the Iron Man three was a was a masterpiece. You know how they give you the most recent uh, appearance of actors in movies when they give you like who they who they are. Um, how? Let's see if you can if you can let's see how accurate this is. These are the actors they have listed in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, written directed by James Gunn of Slither. Um, Chris Pratt of Jurassic World. Okay. Zoe Saldana of Star Trek Into Darkness, which there's been a sequel of since. Yeah. Dave Bautista of Spectre. Vin Diesel yep. of Furious 7, which has been Triple X 3. Bradley Cooper is American in from American Sniper. <laughs> Michael Rooker from Jumper, which I'm 85% certain is less recent than Guardians of the Galaxy. Karen Gillan of The Big Short, which Who she was... The big short? She is the girl in the bikini that someone talks to who happens to be friends, who works for the SEC or something like that. Oh, yeah. So, like, the, oh, yeah, for, like, the five seconds she's yeah. in the movie. Sean Gunn of Gilmore Girls. Why is Sean Gunn even credited because, besides being the brother of James Gunn? That's why. Um, new Sean cast Gunn is members. also in the movie Super. That James Gunn uh, directed. Hmm. Um, that movie's good. Uh, Ray Wilson hits people in the face with a wrench. Tom Clementief from Old Boy. She was in something else more recently. I can guarantee. Um, Elizabeth Debicki of The Great Gatsby and Everest. Chris Sullivan of The Nick and The Drop, and Kurt Russell from The Hateful Eight and The Thing. Yeah, sounds right. Um, Tom, let's look up Tom Clementine's IMDb because she has been in other movies and something caught my eye as a title of a movie. Um, most recently she was in Noonan, which that came out this year, so maybe they didn't do it. But she was also in Hacker's Game in 2015. Um, they didn't want to draw publicity to that because that does not sound like a good movie. I don't know why. Oh, I don't know why. I thought she was in, um, Wolverine. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Um, she was in a movie. Uh, maybe this is the one I should have put on. Porn in the Hood. Porn in the Hood. Porn in the Hood. Put a P. That uh, sounds like an interesting movie. <laughs> um, she is. She, um, but that that is not her IMDb. Oh, that is not in English. That's why. It's not an English movie. Okay, there we go. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, so Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two had a perfect score. Um, we have a synopsis for a movie you're excited for, and I don't think anyone else is. What? Um, G- Justice League. Yeah. Uh, so here is the synopsis, um, t- as translated to English from uh, some Asian language. It doesn't. T- it says <laughs> text comes from Asian film magazine. Okay. okay. So here, here's what it says: In the wake of Clark Kent slash Superman's death at the, at the hands of Doomsday and Batman v Superman, vigilante Bruce Wayne. Uh, slash Batman reevaluates its extreme methods and begins reaching out to extraordinary heroes to assemble a team of crime fighters to defend the world against all kinds of threats. Together with Diana Prince of slash Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot, Batman seeks out gen- gen- cybernetically enhanced former college football star Vic Stone slash Cyborg, speedster Barry Allen slash The Flash, The Flash, and Atlantean warrior king Arthur Curry slash Aquaman. They face off against Steppenwolf, the Herald and second in command to alien warlord Darkseid, who is charged by Darkseid with hunting down three artifacts hidden on Earth. Huh. The synopsis sounds like the Avengers. Mm, no, nah, not really. It's a little bit different. They face off against Loki, the Herald and second in command to alien warlord Thanos, who is charged by Thanos with hunting down alien artifacts hidden on Earth. Hmm, a little bit different. Well, the names are different, yes, and I changed the names. <laughs> Also, uh, Lawrence Fishburne will not be in Justice League. Yeah, I said that already. The schedules didn't work out. Oh, no. No, Perry. What? I'm thankful that he's not in that movie. Because you know why? That said, um, he said he was just, he was like, the schedules didn't really work. And then he was just like, and really, like, in a Justice League movie, do you want to see Perry White over yeah, actual exactly. superheroes? <laughs> like, Perry White is like, in a one... Superman movie. Like, nowhere else. Yeah, he was one of the... Good, one of the better parts of uh, Batman v Superman. He was very funny. Um, let's see. So we also have production on a certain movie that you are very, very hyped for. It's kicking into high gear with more casting reports coming out. 
uh, the movie what being. Is? Let me tell you some of the actors who have been uh, okay. cast to the film. Uh, starting today, the first, the biggest one is um, Ted Levine or Ted Levine, who played Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs. He was cast oh, to the movie yeah. today. Um, then also cast were Toby Jones, who just finished stint on Sherlock and also was in. Uh, Let's see what else is there. Um, the Hunger Games. He was in um, a few other things. Um, he he's jo- oh Captain America. He's joining Rafe Ball, who was in The Big Short and Life of Pi. Um, he joined the movie. Um, yeah, I'm in the wrong button. And then Justice Smith. I don't know who this is. I just googled them. They were they're Ezekiel in the Netflix original series The Get Down. That's who they are. Um, they and are joining returning cast members Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, Jurassic for World Jurassic War. World Two. World War Jurassic. Um, J A Bayonetta Bayana not Bayonetta J A Bayana is directing the sequel. And Frank Marshall returns as producer with Pat, uh, Pat Crowley and Bellin Atenzia. Oh my, I just can't fucking read today. Um, yeah, that was, that was rough. Colin Trevorrow is executive producing alongside Steven Spielberg. Trevorrow directed the first film, but is already committed to Star Wars The, the Next Jedi. And he did co-write the script with Derek Connolly. Um, J.A. Bayana did The Impossible, A Monster Calls, and The Orphanage. Um, I know a monster calls is supposed to be good, but let me see what else is. is it, he was born in Barcelona. Barcelona, um, yeah, Barcelona. The stupid. He, direct, he directed two episodes of Penny Dreadful, and everything and a monster calls. Everything else he's done is in Spanish, and I don't know what they are. Um, hmm. No, and then Derek Connolly. Um, let's see who else. He, what else? He's done, uh, besides Jurassic World. Oh, safety not guaranteed. Oh yeah, I really like that movie. So I think we're set for. I think Jurassic World Two is gonna. Be, um, it's gonna be lit. Yeah, lit with a capital T. Um, Tit. Second time in two podcasts we have to use that. <laughs> um. So, uh, trailers. We talked about the uh, the new Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. Um, from the Super Bowl. I did not watch the full one. I only watched the, the TV spot from the Super Bowl that they aired on TV. Um, we got our first look at the villain, Aisha, who from the comics is a um, uh, created by Adam Warlock, I believe. So there's that going on. Do what? Um, what? What did he create her for? I don't know. She's it, it, just a bad guy. Um, ah, okay. So that that's a, I I don't remember. Um so there's that. Then there was the Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales, which we talked about on Beware of Spoilers. We won't go too far into it, but it's Pirates of the Caribbean, so people will see it anyway. Um Then there was um the, the new Infinity War trailer, which we have more footage of Infinity War than we do for Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh not Guardians of the Galaxy, for um Thor Ragnarok. Um, starring Jurassic Park alum Jeff Goldblum mm-hmm. um, as the, the Grandmaster. Um, <laughs> and I think that's really it for tra- trailers this week. It was a slow week. So we're we're going to start ramping up getting into the summer season. And uh, they're going to start ramping gonna, up. Start gonna, gonna mm-hmm. more. Yeah, I was, I'm going to say the next big burst of trailers is going to come uh, before the next big movie, which is going to be uh, Beauty and the Beast. So, mid actually, we might get a few for Logan, too. A few to be attached to Logan for May and June. and no, then That'd be too much. Why? I, I think movies like a lot of, it's a lot of movies, like, the more trailers they put out, the more disappointed I am. Well, let, 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 I, I think what's going to end up happening is, um, 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 you can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> We're gonna get a, a a final Guardians of the Galaxy trailer, either at 
for Logan or for against Logan or for Beauty and the Beast. We're gonna get a final Guardians of the Galaxy. We're gonna get a a final Ghost in the Shell trailer. Um, I think that's it. Um, oh, you want to hear something funny? What? Remember the actor I told you was cast, Justice Smith? Uh-huh. When you search Justice Smith on Google, he is... Does he feel like a judge? First result is IMDb, then Twitter, then Wikipedia, then his Instagram, then a Vulture article about him, then the trending page on Facebook, then Justice at the Smith Haven Mall in Lake Grove, New York. <laughs> On page yeah, that's one. close enough, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, but I think uh, we're we're in for a. It, it's not gonna be a fun few months for trailers. There's gonna be a lot of waiting at this point. So like, what's next? Um, but so uh, let's talk about uh, Clueless and Pretty in Pink. Yes, it was the week of. No, not really. I was gonna say the week of the eighties, but Clueless came out in the mid nineties, I don't think. Or early nineties? No, nineteen ninety five. Ah, the definition of mid nineties. I keep knocking my headphones out of my ears. I haven't got my new headset yet that'll work with the headphone set. Because I, I my my tax refund came in. So I put the money into uh right, building the, that. the the infrastructure for the podcast. So I bought a new uh-huh. computer and uh, new material and like new computer, new desktop, everything to get it to work right. Because I had the option today, get another dog or get something to run the podcast. And I thought getting something to run the podcast was more important. You're going to buy another dog? Well, I could have because I had a dog adoption plan. So and you're just like, yeah, I'll get another one. Well, yeah, I, I got like $3,000 back. Like, I'm rolling the fucking dough. So I got what's it called? Um, I got a uh, a new desktop, uh, twelve gigabyte RAM, um, two terabyte hard drive, for um, how much did I pay for this? Um, seven fifty. Well, la di da. Desktop, and I bought the uh, I had to buy the screen separate though. Cause they don't come with screens anymore. Um, so yeah, so uh, go into you can go ahead into Clueless. Clueless, okay. Clueless uh, is the greatest rom com of all time. Uh, the synops- the synopsis is a rich high school student tries to boost a new pupil's popularity, but reckons without a- affairs of the heart to getting in the way. If that sounds that familiar seem- to you, that didn't seem like a real sentence. Well, no, no, no. That's not what I, was uh, I would say if that seems familiar to you, because it's based off of uh, you know the movie. Book. You know what book? Famous book. Um, hold on. I can do this. Um, do you want me to tell you? And some nope. player? No. Nope. What is it? The Diary of Anne Frank. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's it called? Uh, Clueless is based on Emma by Jane that's Austen. Jane Austen, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Easy A. Very good. This is also that's the other thing. Easy A is also really like, and that's also a modern retelling of an old, like a classic piece of literature. Yeah, but Easy A is not as good. That's uh based on the Scarlet Letter. Scarlet Letter. That one's a little bit more on the nose, I think. Yeah, just, just a little. So you actually, well, it's hard to do an adaptation of the Scarlet Letter without the Scarlet Letter. It's all, like, isn't it? But it's also a little bit different because she just walks around telling people that she had sex with them. Well, no, but she does actually wear a literal A on her chest. Yes. Um, the lead in that movie is this up is... for Best Lead Actress uh, in the Academy Awards this year. Emma Stone. That is very true. So, yeah. in Clueless, um, she's like this rich high schooler that goes to school in Beverly Hills. And she has her uh, whole life put together. And she's... Um, like there's this movie works on two levels like Dumb and Dumber where it has very outward just stupid funny stuff that goes on that's really funny but it has a bunch of like little things throughout the movie that are also really funny that you might not catch the first time Mm -hmm. 
like yeah, when she when she gives her debate and she just like says like three sentences and then she's just like uh she compares i forget what she compares she compares like refugees or something to like her having to like choose an outfit for the day or something like that mm-hmm. but then she like to see uh but then when she's trying on outfits she makes her friends take pictures of her with a polaroid camera because she doesn't use mirrors she has to see what she looks like when she's being photographed <laughs> There's like little stuff like that. Um, there's a little couple weird things too, uh, because her stepbrother comes to stay with them, and then that's who the love interest is at the end of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> and she's, her and she's in love her with step- her step. Yeah, but they're not like they didn't. They weren't raised together because that's when he comes. She's just like, "Why are you here? You're not even like you've never were a part of our family." <laughs> you know, uh, what's it called? You know, you know what they say. What incest is best if you keep it in the family. Yes, I guess so. That's the moral of this movie. <laughs> um, she uh, and then the, uh, the main, I guess, plot is uh, a new girl comes in that's like weird. So then she decides to make her over, and then but then she creates a monster in the process. Yeah, almost like Mean Girls, but not not to that extent. Yeah, I think and this then... movie is this is one of the better. Um, what's it called? One of the better uh, movies. Like it's it's not even like a. I wouldn't even call it a romantic comedy. Like I, I do would, because I like saying that. I I would say it's a. Uh, what's the one I'm looking for? Like uh, it's like a teen movie. I guess you could. I would call say it's it in that. the it's in the same vein as um, that other one. Um, as Easy A as. Um, Super Mean bad. Girls, where it's like it's it, it it's not a it's not a romance, but the romance is there. So you, yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't like say it's not true. there. Yeah, it's like, I also like um, this is the thing that Pretty in Pink did not do well, but this movie raises because in the, all these movies, like it's not just these two, the mm-hmm. characters act like adults. All their relationships are like yeah, the be all end all, but they're just in high school. Yeah, and then I have in this movie, they um they do. I think they do a good job in this movie. There's like one part I forgot what they're talking about, and she's just like, "I'm just in high school. Like, who cares?" Yeah, exactly. And then uh, she also um like fights for all her grades. Mm-hmm. Like she gets a C, and then she argues it up to an A. And then I like the the fashion of this movie is also pretty funny. Like, there's crazy. They also had a linguist come in on this movie to like teach them how to speak like that good so, no that, 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 that's not maybe as being like haha good no but it actually is good that they did that because it if you don't do that it just makes you look like you're uh much of, it, it, like when you when you're just acting like that and you're just trying to you know do your best and just kind of hoping that it comes out good you end up with like um what was the movie with that where it was obvious it was written by adults and no kid actually talks like that. Yeah, that's one that they that's people what people do talk like. Yeah, exactly. Um She all and then like um her dad buys her a brand new Jeep as a beater car because she's learning how to drive and she just like bounces off the of stuff as she drives around. Also I I think one of the funniest scenes is when they're teaching her friend Dion to drive. Yeah. And then she accidentally goes on the freeway. <laughs> That's when they're like everyone's just screaming, <laughs> and, and then like a biker gang goes by them, and, like tractor trailers, and like, they almost die. But they're only on the freeway for like fifteen seconds. I sent you a link. I want you to watch this before we go on to the next segment. I to it before. Oh, okay. Um, not, not, watch I watch it no, no, no. You, you like while while I'm talking about Pretty in Pink, you can you can watch it then. No, you have to watch the whole thing. You just have to get a gist of what, what okay. it is. Okay. So, um, and then should I should I rate this movie now, or are we gonna rate them both at the end? I yeah, rate it now, and then um, what's it called? Okay. I'll talk a little. I give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, I think this movie's really good too. Like, I went into it with lowered expectations. But, I mean, like, I didn't think it was gonna be that good because, like, based on what the what the movie like is is yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. If you look at the box art for the movie, like, I have like the I have the DVD that I bought yeah, at um, what's it called? But this is the one that I bought. I'm I, I'm used to pointing it the other way. That's, that's what the IMDb one looks like too. Yeah, I have I bought this is probably like the original edition that came out um when DVDs first happened back in like this is, no this is 1999 so this is really early DVD 
Um, and it's, uh, what's it called? It's, uh, when you look at the cover of the movie and you read the back, you're like, this is going to be, um, this, this is going to be painful to watch. <laughs> like, like, no, but you know what? Like, High School Musical painful yeah. to watch. Like, which yeah. is part of the link I sent you. Um, so it's, um, but they, they do a good job of, like, balancing it out and not making it seem, like, like you said. But the thing is, too, it's not, like, that's a John Hughes thing to do. Like, where it's like, you're young, this is the most important thing that's going to happen to you. Like that, that's something that happens a lot in John Hughes movies. But, uh, and, and things that model themselves on John Hughes. Like, you can even see that starting to come through um, in uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, you can see that a little bit even from the first trailer. They're, they are modeling their, their style on John Hughes. Um, but you can, you can start to see that coming out um, there. Um, what else is there? Um, but yeah, I think that's really all I have to add. I mean, the music, the, the, the movie is very well shot, too, which is, like, which isn't asking for a lot. But in a lot of movies like this, where they, you know, no one's really looking for that. A lot of people just put down the back burner, but they don't really do that here. Um, yeah, they don't take anything for granted. Right, the exactly. Mu- the music is really good, too. Mm-hmm. And um, there's just, like, a bunch of little scenes that are, like, almost absurdist, but really funny. Like, once you yeah. get mugged, and then, um, like, a guy holds a gun up to her head <laughs> and makes her lay on the ground. Um, because um, she almost gets, like... Actually, there's one thing. I, I think they organized some of the... They should have... Like, there's her one friend that, like almost tries to date rape her um or just rape her i guess more just like um uh, over sexual assault yeah. when uh they're in the car together mm-hmm. like earlier shots in the movie where he's like hugging her and like kissing her but then they, like don't introduce him as a character until later on it like, doesn't really make sense mm. that's true um like enemy friend or frenemy she, right. she wears like the craziest clothes also, yeah. the the girl that comes is um dead. Uh, this is dead in real life. <laughs> yeah. Um. Fun. Yeah. Fun. Um. So what? Uh, well, that's actually a good segue. Talking about how they don't really establish characters. That's actually one of my biggest complaints with Pretty in Pink. Um. So on that note, how would you rate this movie? Clueless. Yeah. Yeah, nine out of ten. I think I said that. Nine out of ten. You Already. said. Yeah, I'd give, it, I'd give it an eight and a half. Um, so uh, moving on to Pretty in Pink. Uh, Pretty in Pink is another one of uh, the 1980s era John Hughes before he went on to Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Home Alone 3, executive producer on Home Alone 4. I don't need to go on. Um, but he, uh, this was uh, another one where you have, um, oh, what's her name? Um, I need the DVD. Me, Molly Ringwald. Molly Ringwald, yes. He's playing Molly Ringwald in a John Hughes movie. Um, I don't know if she plays literally the same character in every, um, every John Hughes movie. Um, and now, my biggest problem with the movie is John Carter's existence. Which, Your mic is making very weird noises right now. It also may be one of my biggest problems in life is John Carter's existence. We're having technical difficulties. Like, every time you speak, it's like screeching noises in my ear. And it's not just your voice. There it goes. It just, it's back. I don't know what you did. Now I can't hear you. You did something else. Wait, I think I heard you again. Yeah, now it's back. But it was like... Yeah, it was like, um, it was like what the, the aliens sound, sound like in Independence Day. Day. That's, that's, that's the, like, like that, that weird techno, like, like screaming noise. That's what it sounded like. like. So, yeah, so, okay, now it's fixed. Um, let me turn myself off, because I, have you ever seen that bit with Daniel Tosh, where he has the thing that plays himself on a delay, like, two seconds behind him, and he can't keep something over himself, and he talks? No. Yeah, that just happened to me. Um, 
uh, like I said, my biggest problem uh, in life, I think, uh, not Christmas movie, is the existence of John Cryer as a human being. Um, why don't you wait? Why don't you like John Cryer? Have you, have so you ever funny. seen him in um, what's that movie? Uh, a TV show, Two and a Half Men. Yeah, he's like the best character. His existence bothers me on that show too. Now in this movie, he's really. Do you know he wore a spray on hair for Two and a Half Men for the entire time? I did not, but does not surprise he, me. That's what, now he's his head is shaved because he's like mostly bald. Nice. Um, but he said he wanted to shave his head for the show, and they wouldn't let him. He was on Never Not Funny because <laughs> he was very funny. Um, so he is um, his character in this Ducky who never gets a real name. He, he no, they say problem. I think they do say his real name. I think a teacher calls him by like his real name. I think my number one problem with this movie when you watch it, you're gonna be like, do I feel sympathy for him, or do I like not I, feel I, I, like? I him. Well, no, that's the thing is like, is he a scumbag or is he like? Supposed to be like, it, does he actually like um, Molly Ringwald? Or like, what? What is it? Um, I like that. It's just like, what is he up to? Who well, knows? the thing is, the thing is, like, look at his his second line in the movie. Is that is the in, pregnancy thing? Yeah, is that, I have that a deal was, for you two. You could both be pregnant by uh, by Christmas. That was so funny. Like from then on, it's kind of like what happens when in in Willy Wonka, where he he comes out with the cane. And then he he does that he does the the spin like the, the flip, yeah. Where it's like, well, can you take anything he says seriously on the movie? I was fine with that because I thought it was hilarious. And I was like, good, this is a good pickup line that everyone should start using in high school. <laughs> someone at college. It sounds more like something that you would say to someone. Like it sounds more like a date rape line than it is a uh, um a. Uh, Also, do you uh, recognize who the, the dad is in this that movie? No, I recognize he's... Andrew Dice Clay playing himself in one scene. Yeah, he's the bouncer in a few scenes. Yeah, he didn't really need to be himself. He was just a bouncer. And that's well, no. he actually wasn't himself because Andrew Dice Clay was a famous comedian at the time. And they did call, and he does call him Dice at one point. Oh uh, yeah, maybe that's before he's famous. I thought he would be famous by now. Yeah, the um the father is the the bad guy in Big Love, like the head of the cult people. Uh, that was a good show. Yeah, well, I love that show. Um, let's see what else is there. Um, I'm going through the list. Um, James the, Spader. The, James Spader was amazing. <laughs> James Spader plays the same character. He doesn't literally anything else. No, he was more of an asshole in this than per usual. I loved his clothes. That was the best. Just like the rich kids' clothes, they like go to school wearing like white suits, <laughs> like because this crazy shit. It was so funny. And uh, what the fuck? I I I didn't uh, I didn't think that was I I don't know because it's like I've seen him play Robert California, and he plays that, and then he you see this, he's playing the same character, and then you see Age of Ultron, and he's playing the same character. Like if you want proof of this, um. Look up online if it is online, or look on the look in the movie itself, Age of Ultron. The scene where he um, is talking, where he's talking to the twins in the church the first time, then mute it, and that was really weird. Did it mute? No, um, I said I said that, and then your like the the hangout video call jumped to the front of my screen. <laughs> um. Take that scene, mute it, and then play instead the um, play the interview from uh, the office where he's getting interviewed by Jim, uh, Toby, and Gabe, and that, that whole thing. You want to know if you'll be heard? Oh yeah. Feel, like, do you it, feel like you're being you heard be, right now? Are you going to be steamrolled? I don't like I me. I'm talking to you now. I can tell you will not be steamrolled. Like that 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 fits perfectly over that scene, and then there's a, there's that there's one cutaway on the office that fits perfectly over when he's talking to Iron Man, and he's like when the vibranium he's like the vibranium's getting away. It's like mm-hmm. right after that where he's like you're not going anywhere, and he goes you could cut this the one from where he sell where he cuts down the Syracuse branch, and he goes uh, oh they're out there waiting. We'll be talking about a gay show long after their bedtime. <laughs> like well I know, I agree that um 
like Robert California and Ultron are very similar, but I think his character in this movie is very different. No, like, it's he's the much same. more even in Boston League, he's same playing character. this. Okay, no, it's not the same as a mechanical robot. You're welcome. Okay, no, is that what you're looking for? Their, their mannerisms are similar, but he still plays them very differently. Like he's not a really. giant. He's yes, he does. He's much more of an asshole in this, and you can, he comes off like Robert California doesn't come off as an asshole. He does kind of in some. Okay, not in the first episode. He's there. But in later episodes, he does come off of that. But he's cool. He's cooler than he is in Pretty and Fake. And then in Boston Legal, he's uh, like different too. He's, no, like, he's an asshole in Boston Legal. He's not as much. He's not an asshole in Boston Legal. He's cool. I would really um, start going Netflix. I love that show. Oh, do you know what edition of Pretty and Pink I have? What? The pink Every, edition? The Everything's Ducky edition. Oh, uh, did you like not want to buy it when you saw it? No, I didn't know. I didn't know who Ducky was, but I bought. Now it. do you hate? Now do you hate it? Uh, like just a little bit. Um, I, I think the cringiest part was, um, or the part that made me feel the worst for Ducky was when he just he told her he was gonna take her out on a date when she already had a date with the other guy. Yeah, and he like goes and he's like, "Okay, let's leave," and she's like, "I have a date with this guy." Also, did you recognize who that guy was? He was in um, Weekend at Bernie's. He's one of the two guys. Oh, I got Weekend it in a Bernie's, three pack, so it's not one of the stupidest premises for a movie in the world. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have a choice in what edition I got. I got it in a three-pack of uh, Pretty in Pink, good. Some, some Kind of Wonderful, and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which I, I'm gonna, this is gonna sound really sad, I did not know John Hughes made Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Wow. That's kind of sad. I did I not like know Ferris he made, I didn't know he made Some Kind of Wonderful either, though. Probably I never because, seen some kind of wonderful. Probably because before buying this box set, I didn't know that movie existed. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's the, like I just make it three, just throw this one in there. For, and the other thing, if you look at the the size of these DVDs, it looks like It'll the kind be... of DVDs you would buy from a guy underneath a railroad track somewhere, and not from yeah. Target for eight dollars. They look too. They look too skinny. They're, they're, they look like screeners. Like yeah, Oscar screeners is what they look like. Um, so maybe so, you actually yeah. got the Oscar screeners. Probably not because those movies came out a long time ago. Did you uh, watch the video? Yes, the okay. High School Musical song. Yeah, the... that was pretty good. Lip, but like, it made it seem. I saw. Like it I saw just the part where uh, at the at the end when um where he, right before he cuts his legs off, his arms and legs off, and they're 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 doing the chorus. That that was the part I saw like in the in the Vine clip. And I was like, this is just so funny. You're like I have to watch this. I had to look up the full version then. No, I was trying to go find the Vine clip on YouTube because Vine doesn't exist anymore. Um, so I could show were that you, to like, you. Were you looking up Vine on YouTube? No, I, I saw it. It came up on my suggested videos because I, I watched a video based on Star Wars. And then I couldn't find it again after that. I guess it was taken down for some reason. Um, and then I found that version. Dead. So I sent you that version. Um, but for Pretty and Pink, what would you rate it? Or do you have any comments on Pretty and Pink? Um, I thought some things in it were weird. Like, I think I tried to do too much. Like her relationship with her dad, yeah, and then like them like yelling at each other. Then her dealing with being a poor person, but she didn't really look that poor. Yeah, she had very like, nice I, for a poor person. Yeah, I hope um, poor someday. I also like. I I don't know. Her doing Ducky being weird. Ducky going to the dad and telling her him that he's gonna marry her. And yeah, ask for... Ducky is cringy on so many levels in this. Uh, and then uh, actually later on Molly Ringwald, Ringwald um, said that Ducky's supposed to be gay hmm. and then John Cryer was like no one told me <laughs> um, oh do you want to say something that you may not have known about the newsroom what do you know who directed episode 5 of the final season oh Shenandoah is... no Paul Lieberstein who is he played Toby on The Office, also one of the oh uh, yeah, one of the showrunners on The Office for a while. I know he, that's uh, the only reason he became a character is because other people thought it'd be funny to make him act, so they because of how awkward he is. So yeah. they just that's why every show that he's one of the head writers on or the like the main person, uh, he, he's not in the episode really at all because he hates it. But then every time that someone else is, he, he'll be like a prominent person in. The yeah. Episode. Um. That's why there's like an entire. That's why there's the entire like. Half a season that he's not there. But season four, he, what was it season three ended with goodbye? No, season four ended with goodbye, Toby. Then season five yeah. was a half season, 
where he wasn't on because it was just him and Steve Carell doing all the showrunner duties because that was the year of the writer's strike. Yes. That was why it was a short year. Um, anyway, what would you rate Pretty in Pink? I think I would give it seven. Yeah, I'd give it a seven, too. It, it, like, it didn't live up to the expectation I had in my head for it. Because like, anytime you hear that movie, everyone's like, oh, go see this. It's amazing. It's like the best movie. It's, it's not that good. I like it better than... I don't... For, for me, that's how I feel about The Breakfast Club. I, I really love don't The Breakfast like, Club. I, re- I know I'm like the only person, but I really do not like The Breakfast Club at all. That's the, Yeah, that, that's wrong. <laughs> I, and, and as people who listen to the show know, I do openly tell people that opinions are wrong. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, so, um, which actually was why, the reason why I showed you that clip is because it highlights, that's, you know what that song is from? High School Musical, right? Well, in high school, it's in High School Musical 2. Um, yeah. you didn't have a younger sister, uh, I growing up. I've, I've seen the first High School Musical, and that is it. So you didn't get subjected to all three High School Musical. Well, only High School Musical 1 and 2, because by the time 3 came out, she had a TV in her own room, so she didn't have to subject me to it, because you didn't have to use the living room TV. Um, so she, um, uh, High School Musical 2. Um, by the way, you know Hannah Montana has a cami- uh, cameo in it? I did not. That's exciting. Because there was a vote on Disney's website who should cameo in High School Musical 2, and Hannah Montana won. Cool. So, that, that, there you go. There's your, your, That's your, exciting. Uh, your trivia for the day. Um, no, but so in High School Musical 2, the plot is it's, it's like summer after junior year. Because if I remember correctly, the first one takes place over an entire junior year. Then summer junior year is two. And then senior year is obviously three senior year. Um, so the the movie is about how um, the main character, Troy, is being actively vetted by uh, college basketball programs. To, like, over play prefer- the summer into his senior year. Yeah. Well, because the thing is, he's, he's, at a con- he's, he's working at a country club. And he's like, cool. oh, guys, you're going to be so happy. I got you guys all jobs working at the country club, and you'll be able, you'll get paid tips and all that. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, this is great. Because that's a normal response. So then what happens is he starts going away from his friends to go be with these recruiters. His friends are all also basketball players, I might add, uh, with the text of his girlfriend. Now, Wait, no so the one recruiters are just, like, hanging out, like, all the time? At this Albuquerque country club. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I remember it's in Albuquerque is I saw the picture of, did you know that Breaking Bad and High School Musical take place in Albuquerque? Very at around the same at, at around the same time. What if Walter White is their chemistry teacher? <laughs> so um so the so the, this the song that you that that was in this AMV, uh, I think that's what it's called. When you put a song over a clip from a movie. It's uh it's Star Wars Gotta Go My Own Way. Uh, about the relationship between Anakin and Obi Wan, um, which it, it, it's actually hilarious because it, it, they, they're it's singing really at each other about like the the chorus of the song when they're fighting on Mustafar, and it's really funny. So, um, but it does highlight the biggest problem with all of these movies like this because the the emotional crux of this movie is that he wants to go with these recruiters to like, get in with this college program, which, as ridiculous as it is that these recruiters are meeting with them over the summer and all that, like, for the basketball program, which isn't that outlandish. It's just it's outlandish how long they're meeting with him, if it's right. more than one, like, meal. Right, so they're, they're meeting with him, the, the, which, which, even so, that's not the biggest suspension of disbelief in this movie, let's be honest with you. Because uh, the immediate next dance number is him running around a golf course in the middle of the day, screaming at water. Like... I I don't understand. Cool. Like that's the bigger special display. Like there's kids running around the golf course, and no one's like, "Um, can we play through?" Like, <laughs> um, so he's um, this whole thing's happening. But like, the girl's supposed to be really smart too. Vanessa Hudgens' character's supposed to be really smart, if I remember correctly. So the um, like, why wouldn't she just be like, absolutely go with these recruiters? Like, no, like even the basketball players are like, "Come on, man, you got to with your friends, not." Going to college and playing professionally, like <laughs> what the screw all did? that. <laughs> like that that's the problem with this movie, is like you're you're he's making the rational decision here. Like this is the smart thing for him to do. And you're and you're just like, no, that's not important. Like, no, it is important. He's doing the right thing. And they still have an entire year left too. Because the fact that he's villainized for 
for going with recruiters is ridiculous. It's it what bothers me about this movie, and that's just why I wanted to say, like, does it mean that doesn't happen to you in high school where your no. friends villainized because you go you went and hung out with college basketball recruiters? No. Um. So yeah. So that that's just my point on that. Um. Do you want to talk You're about right uh, on High School Musical? Yeah. Exactly. Um. So let's talk about uh, a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. I one really and two. Okay, we're just doing episodes one and two. Right, just I watched the very all beginning. It. I did too. I was okay. gonna try and okay. do it as we go, but I did not have the self control. Yeah, I just watched all of it. So we're just doing one and two. Just one and two. Okay. I really liked this. Um the only thing I started not liking were the children actors. Yeah. Here's the, the thing. You can't go the with daughter, a child. The the, uh, the girl has Donald Trump lips. Do you know do you know what the girl is from before this? No. She played young um, Supergirl on Supergirl. Oh, ah, cool. She's in the opening credits of every episode. I'm like, where have I seen her before? And I'm like, because in a season and a half of Supergirl, I've seen her literally every episode. Yeah, she, like, they're fine. I'm happy they got, like, actual children. That That's pretty good. And, like, they're fine, but I just think they're boring. Hmm. And the, yeah. uh, the when the girl talks, she, like, pushes her lips out a lot, just like Donald Trump. And it's very distracting. <laughs> like, Why are you staring at a 13-year-old so girl's lips? Because she, like, sticks them out like Donald Trump does. Like, when he says huge, like, that's how she talks all the time. <laughs> um, I um, hate... Uh, one of the things that the show really highlights is the pretentiousness of literally everything around it. Yeah. I think it's the most pretentious of the, uh, of, of like, children's TV shows. Um, I don't think the children's TV show. Well, like children's dirty. books, too. Um, <laughs> it's not a very deep well there. Um Yeah. Like, let me I remember loving these, but I definitely had a giant misunderstanding of this book. I want to reread yeah. them because I think I like that I interpreted it very different as like a second or third grader. Let me take a look at the uh, and I thought I it was much more serious. Than yeah, I guess what, it actually is. That's what I thought too. It's it, like I, I guess I was just wrong in my interpretation. Like, yeah, I guess I, I like thought it was a lot more serious than it actually is, but I want to reread it to see. So I wrote. I actually wrote notes about each episode. Episode one. Um, I don't. I said I don't remember the eyeglass. Like the the. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. There's a couple of things that I'm trying to think if I just forgot or they're just adding. I like what they're adding in with the secret society stuff early on. But the other thing with the telescope is I don't remember the telescope was also in the movie. So maybe I guess not remembering. Um, yeah, that, I guess that might be it too. I because I don't I don't remember that. I don't remember there being that much eye imagery imagery besides mm-hmm. his tattoo. And, and they, the, even the they, tattoo, the tattoo doesn't look like how it was described in the book. The tattoo was meant to look different from the VFD in in the book. I forgot that. I yeah. remember he used to be a part of VFD or something like that. He was, but his tattoo looked different from. Or it was drawn different earlier, and then they changed it later on. That's why he left, because he's like, now my tattoo looks retarded. And then he quit. <laughs> what the fuck, guys? Yeah, and no, then I'm I'm trying to, I, don't, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm just trying to stick with the first two episodes. Um, I really liked... I li- at first, I was like, why is Patrick Warburton playing Lemmy Stickett? Like, that's I not what it. I imagined. But then I really liked him. I really liked his like how he narrated, like, there. Yeah. And, uh... Him walking around in the tunnels and like there's a lot of shit down in the tunnels and he's walking around. Like, you can like, see like there's oh. the, there's the reference like what the hell, one of the tunnels leads to six six seven lousy lane not lousy lane the other one. Uh, from I know uh, what you're talking about. And then people's names. Yeah. Um, there was Poe's secretary in the first book at all. No, that's an original character to the uh, to the TV. That's what it, yeah. I that, I was like, wow, did I really forget this much? Yeah, she was not at all in the uh, in the in the book. I like that too. The show, what the society society thing been up to? Oh, there is an overlap of one character, one actor from this and the movie. Yeah, I know who it is. I know who it is. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Catherine O'Hara. Yes, she plays. She played... Uh, uh Justice Georgina Strauss. Orwell and just yeah. Just uh, um Joan Cusack was good as Justice Strauss. Yeah, she, that's why I wanted to put my that's my next note. Joan Cusack does a great job as Justice Strauss. 
Um, I also have uh, there was a reference to Book Eleven in the first episode. I don't know if you caught it. Is Eleven the Grotto? Yes. Okay, I don't know what the reference was. I'll, I'll just trigger the whole thing, right? No, that's that's in the second okay. episode. In the first episode, she's um, what's it called? She she's walking around her library and she talks about all the books. And she goes, and we, I even have books about the most dangerous fungus known to man. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was a thing. Yes. I, um, That's one I of like, was like, okay, I remember this from something, but I forgot which my actual book it's from. That's one of the things that kills uh, Olaf, one of the things that aids in his death, spoilers, at the end of the 13th book. I'm not going to stick with that from the uh, TV show, but... That's that might be a little bit too intense. Actually, they do pretty gruesome deaths on the show. So, That's like, what I think the maybe they will. That's the other thing is um, they... Um, that was one of the other. This is in the second and the fourth episode. I just want to bring it up because we're, we're referencing the end. There, there is the the harpoon gun, which you put when they're pulling uh, the guns, and he's like the knife, the axe, and then it's like child's play. And he pulls something else, and she pulls out a harpoon gun, mm-hmm. and like yeah. and then that's another. I one. also um. Oh fuck! What was it? But I have everyone. Every time it's a reference, I don't know if the reference was in the original text or if it was just brought in after the fact like the the fungus thing could have been a throwaway line that was in the original and then i just don't remember because I, I haven't read the book since i was in the fourth grade yeah i, I kind of want to reread them but i know i'm it's gonna be like re like rewatching the brave little toaster or, where it's, gonna, it's, or it's gonna be like reading a textbook if any if the tv show is anything to base it on with how pretentious it is yeah that's another good point at least the first few are pretty short yeah so they're easy to go through um, let's see. Patrick Warburton's narration feels like an audiobook, especially in the beginning. Yeah, I like Patrick Warburton's voice. Um, I like that they're doing the Beatrice letters, too. Yes, in the beginning of each uh, book. Uh, the cinematography is great, um, and the cinematography and set designs feel like... Uh, the cinematography feels like Wes Anderson, and the set designs feel like a cross between Tim Burton and Wes Anderson. Yeah, definitely the color scheme reminds me a lot of Wes Anderson. But like, even when they I like were the clothes, too. But, like, the thing is, when you have a single character talking in a lot of movies and TV shows, you won't have them center-framed with everything around them, like, outward. You usually have them off to the side in either direction. Yeah. But Wes Anderson always has, when it's one character talking, them center frame. And they, mm-hmm. like, it, like, especially in the second episode, when they have Poe at his desk, he's always in the middle at the desk. Um, Neil Patrick Harris is a better Jim Carrey than Jim Carrey did. Um... And again, this is again if the memory if memory serves. The rest of the te- the theater troupe appears more compassionate to the Baudelaire situation than they appeared in the books. Yeah, I didn't really like that. I like yeah. I love the like, hook-handed man. He's not he's my favorite character. I like the one the one that dresses up. This is going into the second book, but he's the one that dresses up as the nurse. Oh, and that's the, supposed to be the man of indiscriminate gender. Yes, the man of indiscriminate gender, who is in Jurassic World. He is the kid, world. the kid who is letting people onto the ride. Oh yes, and he's yes. just like, yeah, okay. Oh, come he's on, guys, funny. I just work here. I I like him. He's funny, but he's not uh, really. You can tell it's a guy. So, um, the twins uh, are also good. The white faced women. Yeah, and the, the other thing, the the thing that really sets it apart is this movie does serious moments better than the movie did. Like the movie, if I remember correctly, again, I haven't watched the movie in a while. The movie wasn't but, good. Like the movie didn't include when Olaf slaps. Klaus, or if it did, it was for comedic effect. Yeah. Like, here, it's like they bring everything to a halt when that happens. Klaus was being a little bit of a little bitch, though. So. Yeah, I guess a little bit, but um, the ending of the TV, of the first episode, has the montage of Easter egg we already talked about, which is very similar to the Flash season one finale in the time stream. Um, I also like Sonny's subtitles. They're pretty funny. Well, that's like the book. Yeah, but the, they did it, like, in the movie, they never did that. I also like how every time Sonny talks, uh, like Olaf recoils, like Ugh. like literally yeah. every time she talks. Um, did she uh, escape by playing poker in the book? Yes, she is. Okay. No, 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 not by playing poker in the book. I don't remember how in the book, but she didn't play strip poker with Hulk and Man. Okay, that was that was, that was what the that was what the joke was. Is like that, like um, every time she won a hand, she took off one of the things that was binding her, and he put it Ooh. on. Oh, my phone died. Fuck. Um, I, I forgot my phone was on three percent. Um, what else? And then, uh, there's one other thing for the fine for, I can't even look at my notes. Um, do you have any more thoughts on the first episode while we come back on? 
Uh, the first episode, um, Mr. Poe's coughing annoys me. Well, that was something in the book too, but it didn't. It wasn't as prevalent because it's not like and he coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed. Yeah, in the show, it's a little bit much. Um, the CG is a little off too. That was one of the it's other definitely things I had. bad. But like whatever, there there are sometimes the CG has like the Deadpool esque charm to it, where it's like oh it's it's low budget so like it's okay ish if the, the CG is that bad. But um, I don't think it's charming, but I I forgive it. Well, no, but there is uh, not charming, but there is like 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 it's tongue in cheek kind of. I don't think I just they didn't have enough money. That's true. Like I don't recall the the thing to get back the uh, the rock. Or the grappling hook being steampunk machine that can climb up a curtain. Um, that's in the second episode, though. Um, oh wait, what? I have a. Why doesn't Violet just always have her hair tied up if she can only be smart if her hair is tied up? Which that was the other thing that annoyed me. Anytime she does it, they could be like they always like change everything and, she, and it always zooms in on her face and she's always like doing like it. Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can they zoom into his head? Um. But yeah, um, and then the second episode um, has a few other meta references. There's the Sugar Bowl, where it's like he's talking to Cloud, saying like, "I can, I think I've been a little bit standoffish," which was another one of the lines that they adapted into the movie, which always struck me as odd because it's like there every movie adapted from a book includes some lines from the book, even if they're yeah. out of place. Like the Hunger Games had the one that I've already ranted about, where um, after Rue gets uh, stabbed. When she's like, did you up all the food? And Katniss does every bit of it. Like, that's not how Katniss talks in the movie. So why'd you include that line? She doesn't talk. It, it, it sounds very out of character. Or like, when I read Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, I was like, they're definitely going to include when, um, when Molly attacks Bellatrix, not my daughter, you bitch. Yeah. Like, I, like, that was like a given, which even that death still pisses me off to this day. Um, <laughs> because as I've said before, Neville should have killed her. That would have been a completion of his character arc. It should have ended there for Neville. But no, he doesn't get that. The Weasley take that away from him too. Um, <laughs> so in the movie with um, what's his name with uh, Jim Carrey, they um, they do um, include the standoff, which was a little bit weird because it's like the only direct callback in that way to the book. And in that scene, he's having coffee, and he goes, and I can never find the damn sugar bowl. And the sugar bowl is, as we know, the MacGuffin, which that's actually how I learned the phrase. They they explain that it is a MacGuffin, which means it has no impact on the story, what's in it. It's just they're searching for it the entire time it drives a plot. Yeah, that that I remember reading that in the, like, the whatever book it is, and I was like, I was like, what the fuck is happening? And that's the 12th book. Yeah. So, um... They uh, oh, and I forgot to mention in the first one. That was what my final note was. Um, I know now what the answer is, but they there are two characters that were not in the book in the first episode and are continuing character arc over the course of the um, the rest of the series. And uh, Kobe Sm- Sm- Smulders, Smulders. Okay, yeah, that and Will Arnett are playing characters only credited as mother and father. Ooh, and then we'll see what happens. Right, because, like, and the thing is, I knew, not because I read it online anywhere, I knew at, after that episode, I was like, wait, there's no way the parents are still alive. That's how and I was like, I don't know what's happening right now. I was like, they're taking liberties with the source material, but I was like, there's no way the parents are still alive. But I knew who they were after the second episode, because I figured it, I figured what they were doing. I and knew I, who they were after, actually, no, that, I knew in the, uh, in the four, in the in the seventh episode, when they showed who no, they were. No, not in that episode. <laughs> it was the, the episode with the picture, and they show the picture. Oh yeah, oh, um, that's when I like I, one. Yeah, that's the, I was just like, oh okay. Um. So um, on to the second episode. My phone's finally turning back on. Um, Thank God. <laughs> it's been dragging it ever since my phone died. Well, um, what else is there? Um. Because I watched these a few weeks ago, and I was like, this is amazing. And I marathoned all of it, so it's all just merging together in my head. Um, I'm going to rewatch episodes uh, four, or three and four before the next episode we do. Um, let's see. Uh, opening credits are the opening. And then I realized 
the opening credit song is either the opening lines of the first book or the back cover of the first book adapted to be about a uh, about a TV show instead of a book. Huh. Um, the map of the city that they show in Mr. Poe's office matches the VFD insignia. Um, now, here's something I noticed. I was trying to figure out the um, the where it is supposed to take place, and the skyline in episode two is the skyline of New York City. Oh, that's what I think I told that too. Because the Empire State Building's in the background. Um, the cinematography uh, we already talked about the cinematography and the music both are reminiscent of Wes Anderson. Uh, Sugar Bowl joke already did that. Oh, they kept in the um, the gag. He read the same sentence over and over again. He finds off reading the same sentence over and over. Mm-hmm. Remember that from uh, that was in the book. Yeah, it was like a whole page of it, like over and over again, right? No, no, no. There, there was uh, like three whole pages of darkness. Mm-hmm. That one what were just black pages uh, in the sixth one. And that one was just like that. Um, there are a few really funny moments that um, he gets to have Patrick Warburton as Lemony Snicket. Oh, there was also that one when they're picking out the cake for the, for the uh, thing. It's like, this one's chocolate, this one's vanilla, and this one's a little bit lemony. And then Kent Off says, never say that name to me again. Yeah. I also like that part because he's like, he like takes them away and they yell at him and he's just like, let me eat cake. Yeah. That was really funny. <laughs> now, I think the, the moment that sold him for me as being able to do both the comedic and the serious is when, so the thing is, none of Jim Carrey's jokes even touched on being dark humor. Like, all of his jokes were meant to be funny for a kid, not funny for, like, anyone. Like, the kid could find, still find dark humor, but, like, a kid, like, um, they're not gonna take a risk and have it be too dark. But when he's giving the tour of the house, and he says, um, this is the kitchen. You'll find the stove here. It acts very much like a servant. Sometimes you have to whack it to get it to work. Like, and it's like, um, he's like, this is the bathroom. You'll be cleaning it in your spare time. Uh, don't forget to save your toothbrushes. You'll be using those to brush your teeth as well. Like, it, 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 they never had that level of, like, the, like, the dark aspect of the character when Jim Carrey uh-huh. played it. It was always very, it was always very light and even like that. Um, let's see. Um, Gustavo actually makes an appearance. Um, in the uh, in the TV show, he never makes an appearance in the book. Um, Who is that? The assistant to uh, Monty. Oh Monty. yeah, yeah, yeah. That dies. Okay, yeah. Do you know what his last words were? No. Um, it was his last words are, um, the uh, VFD's motto. I forgot what they are, but what does smoke this fire? No. There's another one. Um, then I have uh, Violent Adventures are more extravagant than in the book. Um, Beatrice has been yet uncast, and there are blurry pictures of her, rather than ha- where it's like censored, rather than just doing the Ant-Man method of having her wearing a hat that's tilted away. <laughs> yeah. Um, the baby... Oh, this is the one of the things that bothered me from the end of the episode. The CG on the baby... The CGI mouth. Awful. Yeah. The CGI mouth. The CGI yeah. uh the CGI chains on the baby. The CGI baby flying through the air. Everything involving the baby being CGI looks like yeah, the CGI awful. baby like eating things. Yeah. Um and then there's all the oh, and then there was one other big thing from the end. Um Oh. The the other moment that sold the menace of Count Olaf was the end of the first episode, when the lights go out in the theater. And he puts his face right up to Violet in the dark. And you can really just see his teeth and the outline of his uh, his beard. And he's saying, like, no matter where you guys go, I will chase you down and I will find you. Like, that sold the sinister aspect of this character. But he does a good job with the comedic, too. Like, especially, like, what's it called? When he's, um... And, oh, there was one other moment, you know, later on, that really sold the sinister. Is the end of the seventh episode when he gets introduced to the children again and they, they uh-huh. open, they open the, the very fancy door, which is the first time they use the VFD weird acronyms. 
Oh yeah, and then it cuts to Lemony Snicket, and he just like just look away. Yeah. Um, when they open the door and you see him in drag, like it's still menacing him in drag. Like anytime he makes a reappearance, it's menacing. But I do like his different uh, like clothes. And they're closer to the book and how they were than uh, they were in the movie. Um, oh, funny me! I have parents are still alive confirmed from by the final scene. <laughs> uh, funny, naive me. Um, but yeah, it's it, this is a very good adaptation of the source material, which is, the source material is pretty bad to begin with. If it is as I remember it, it's one of those things that you. It, it's not like Harry Potter, which aged well. This this yeah. did not age well. Um, is it worth reading like the spinoff books? I ha- I haven't read any of them. Yet. Uh, I was just going down that rabbit hole. Like I, I I don't care enough about the source material to be like, ooh, let's go into the deeper lore of a series of unfortunate events. Like, like it's not that big of a deal at this point. Like, but, um. So yeah. So do you have anything else you want to address before we? Uh... Uh, I was happily surprised by this movie. It was uh, or the series. Mm-hmm. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I wasn't going to watch it at all at first, but then you said it was good, and I someone else told me it was good, so I decided to watch it. And I'm happy I did. I'm trying to. It was one of those things like when I read American Gods, the, the Neil Gaiman book, American Gods. Uh, it, it reawakened my my like because the thing is, when I went to college, it totally killed any drive I had to read fiction recreationally. Because, like, I, I read enough as it is. And I should read enough as it is. But I just couldn't bring myself to read anything on my own. Then, like, as bad as it was, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and the American Gods uh, both brought that back, like, for me to want to read. This brought back my drive to watch Netflix TV shows. Because I still haven't finished Luke Cage yet. Um, but I did finish. I finished this in two days. Like, it, it was, like... Like, you remember when I watched Daredevil and Jessica Jones, and I did those binged over, like, 24 right, hours and, like, died. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, as sad as that was, I I did do that. Um, but it, the, the, this show is that good. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anyone who hasn't yet watched it. Um, even if you didn't read the source material, you don't need to. It's not like we're making it sound like there are a lot of callbacks to the source material that you're going to, like, like, you're not missing much if you don't read the source material. But um, you definitely should watch it. Uh, if you haven't already. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, now that we're done with uh, that, do you have anything else you want to add uh, for a final bit before we uh, sign off for the night? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm all set. I completed my newsroom on DVD collection. I now have three seasons on DVD. Wow, that's definitely worth it. Well, okay. Before you start making fun of me for that, I paid twenty dollars total for seasons one and two. Like I'm in a two for twenty pack at Walmart, and then I paid fifteen for season three. I got that at Barnes and Noble for half price. And then I got John Adams as well on DVD, fifteen as well. Also at Barnes That's Noble. Weird. Um, but now I have all the newsroom and John Adams as my TV collection, as well as season two of The Flash, season two of Rick and Morty, and season one of The Flash, and all of Legend of Korra. All of Avatar Legend. And, um, season one of War from Black, which I still get to watch. Um, I did buy season one of Supergirl on Amazon. I think you remember this. Because I didn't want to endorse Chuck Lore in any way. So yes. I bought, I bought the se- I bought the season on, uh, Amazon. So I could watch it. So I didn't want to watch CBS. I didn't want to do anything like that. So I just bought it online. <laughs> Um, rather than give Chuck Lorre any satisfaction. Um, so next week is uh, Valentine's Day. Um, we will be covering uh, Jerry Maguire. Uh, next week. What a movie. It, it, is, it is a romance, Jerry Maguire. <laughs> That's a rom-com, yeah. Um, that one will be next week. And the week after, we have uh, Wolverine. And then the week after, we have Godzilla. Woo, Godzilla. Unless we... Sh- well, hmm. I'm going to look at the schedule see where we screwed up. But I think we should have had another episode. We, this episode should have been last week. It should have been the ninth. It was the eighth. 
So we moved this one back to the 12th. So we should still have another one this week, either the 15th or the 16th. And then we will move this one. There should be another one in between. I don't have my laptop. Well, I got a new computer, as I said, because it was more important for me to make sure the podcast is working properly than to get another dog. So um, wow. I don't have the guy. I don't have the list in front of me yet. So, um, so yeah, so the 22nd, we should have another episode after um, Jerry Maguire. Um, do you happen to remember off the top of your head what it is? But what is? What the, the other episode we're missing was it Paranormal Activity? I feel like that was it. Oh, yeah. I think it, I think it was Paranormal Activity. <sighs> I wish I could have forgotten that we had another episode in the middle. Um, all right. I guess we're doing Paranormal Activity. Um, yeah. <laughs> all the Paranormal Activity. Not just the first one. The first shitty one. We're doing all of the shitty ones. Um, so, yeah. So, we got uh, Jerry Maguire. Um, I wish we can call Audibles. Like, I wish you can just say, like, you know what? Screw it. We're going to do an Academy Award winning movie instead because the Academy Awards are coming. So, like, let's do Rocky or some shit. You don't have uh, to do Rocky. Well, no, but it won last That was your go-to? It yes, was. Yes, okay, let's do The Artist then. No, that's a... <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> no, That was I'm the beginning good. of gimmick movies winning Oscars. <laughs> well, no, Boyhood screwed that up. Um, well, The Artist we won Street? an Oscar before Boyhood. Did we do Sing Street yet? We did, we did Sing Street when it came out. We didn't do it on this show yet, though. I don't think we need to do that twice. Uh, um, I'm looking at my my collection of Academy Award winning movies. Um, let's see what we can do instead of Paranormal Activity. Um, oh, what do we have? I do Carol. Uh, we can do Straight Outta Compton. Nah. Do you want to do you want to subject yourself to Straight Outta Compton? We'll see. Uh, yeah, let's see what we can figure. We're gonna interject another one in there so we're back on track properly. Um, uh-huh. we can just do a fucking Disney movie for all I care at this point. Like, I have a pile of Disney movies we can do. We can do Beauty and the Beast. We can do Pinocchio. Just came out on Blu-ray. Uh, Cinderella I have on DVD on Blu-ray. I have Pocahontas one and two. I have we did Little Stitch. I have Mulan one and two. We have a fuck ton we can do with those. Um, so yeah, but we'll get back to you on that. But next week, definitely Jerry Maguire. Um, and yeah, we'll be back with uh, more next week. Hopefully, some actual news happens in the next week, and we're not stuck like we were this week. So uh, bye. You got that in before I, I hit? Yeah, you got that in. So uh, that, that's it. good. You didn't get that one in after I. So now I'm signing off. So good night. We're still going. Okay. Ha 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 ha!